Hello, welcome. Take a moment, read this problem, try it out, and then press play and we can solve it together. Okay, so we're told that this person has a credit card that has a 19.2% annual interest rate compounded monthly. So 19.2% over the course of a year. But if it's compounded monthly, that's 19.2 divided by 12. Just going to reason that out, see what that is. 19.2 divided by 12 is 1.6. So there's 1.6% um, interest uh, being charged each month. She owes a total balance of B dollars after M months. So B is the amount she owes. M is the amount of months that have passed. Assuming she makes no payments on her account, the table below illustrates the balance she owes after, after M months. Okay, so as the months goes on, she's not paying her credit card. The amount she's owing is increasing to from a thousand all the way up to over three thousand. And they want to know what? Let's see. Over which interval of time is her average rate of change for the balance on her credit card account the greatest? Okay, so um, here we want to find average rate of change, which is essentially slope. And uh, I'll show a picture of this in a moment. But the idea of average rate of change is that you've got a graph of something, right? And it's not continually changing. Maybe this is exponential. So there's no constant slope. But the idea is if you look at two particular points, let's call them A and B, at these inputs right here, you can find their outputs, their heights. And you can say, okay, well, this is F of A, the output F of A, and this is the output F of B. And then you can find the average rate of change between these two points, which is just a line, essentially, right? The slope of this line that connects these two points right here. And that is what we're finding. We're finding the slope of this line. That's our average rate of change. So for example, if we go through all of these choices, uh, we'll see different, probably different average rates of change. So for example, from month 10 to month 60, so those are my inputs, 10 and 60, and I want to find the outputs, f of 60 and f of 10, and subtract them. Because if you remember with slope, the idea is delta y over delta x is the difference of the y's over the difference of the x's. So here I can just say, well, the y's are the outputs. It's f of 60, whatever that is, minus f of 10. And that's over um, the inputs, 60 minus 10. And I could have done it the other way. I could have said f of 10 minus f of 60, but I would have had to also reverse the denominator to get 10 minus 60, and that would get me the same thing. So f of 60, if you look at our table, that's this number right here. It's the output. It's the y value. Um, in this case, the balance. It's 2591.90 minus f of 10, 1172 over 60 minus 10, uh, 10 which is 50. This will be the average rate of change for choice one. If I pull up my calculator, I think this is the fastest way to do this. If we know another way, please let me know. Uh, it's 2591.9 minus 1172. Enter, divided by 50, 28.398. Notice I didn't put 2591.9 minus 1172 divided by 50. That would only divide the second number by 50. If you want to enter it all at once, you would add parentheses around the 2591.9 and the 1172 and divide the whole thing by 50. Otherwise, if you just divide the second number by, by 50, it'll of course get you a different answer. So that's 28.39. Okay, so I'm going to write that over here. For choice one, it is, oops, 28, what was that? 28.398. Now, we could go through each choice, um, but we might also start to estimate. So for example, 19 to 69, okay, there we're going, let me clear off some of my old notes here. From 19 through 69 here, we're going up from 1300 to 2900, that's a difference of 1600 over 50, right? Now here, it's gonna be higher, because then the previous example, because this was a difference of less than 1600 over 50. So I know choice one is out, right? Choice two is a little bit higher. And I, I feel like, I'm not sure about this, but I feel like the fastest way is to really get to it is just to calculate them all. So we have f of 69, so bear with me, minus f of 19 
over 69 minus 19, and we'll see that this is greater. And I started to estimate there, and you can keep estimating. I just feel like the numbers are all over the place and a little bit too hard to deal with strictly by estimating. So here we're going to have 2990. This time I'm going to enter directly in the calculator to speed things up. Let's start with my parentheses. So 2990 minus 1352. And that's all divided by 50. This should be a greater number than before. And it is 32.76. Okay, so this is 32.76. And then we keep going from 36 through 72. Okay, so 1700 to 3135. And let's change colors there. 1700 to 3135. So we'll write that down here. So this is for our third choice. And what we're looking at is f of 72 minus f of 36, so the balance is at 72 months and 36 months, over 72 minus 36. And when we work this out in the calculator, I'm going to get 37.92, so it's increasing so far. And we're trying to find the greatest, so I'm going to cross out choice two. Choice three is potentially the answer. And then we go to choice four. We're going from month 60, 2591, to 73. Now what's difficult about estimating here, for me at least, you're only going up about 600, but it's over 13 months. And so this doesn't necessarily need to be the smallest just because it's increasing the smallest. It's also going over the smallest amount of months, so 60 to 73. And then I'll, I'll talk a little bit about some other estimation techniques that might speed up this process. So f of 73 minus f of 60 over 73 minus 60. Now when we do the calculations here, um, I think we should get a much higher number. Let's check. So we do parentheses and we do um, month 73 first, 3186 minus, what is it, um, month 60, the balance was 2591.9. And then we divide by the difference of the month, so that's uh, 73 minus 60, which is 13. We get 45.7, clearly the highest here. So 45 point, what was that? 45.7. Okay, so it's 45.7. So we started off at 28.398. And then as we went on, it increased. Now that's that tells me that, you know, when I first looked at this problem, I might have just said, okay, I may just start with choice four. Because as you go along in the graph, first we're going from the first set of months, 10 through 60, and then we're going further along in the months each time, I would expect a higher rate of change as I go because the growth is exponential. So the further along the exponential curve you're looking, perhaps I might expect the larger average rate of change. And if we look at the graph itself, I just input this into Desmos right here. Um, let me get my line tool so you can see what this looks like. Let me do a thinner line. Okay, and let's do red. Let's color code as we go, sorry. So blue was first, right? So first we went from month 10 through 60. So month, here's 20, here's month 10, and then, that's not a line at all, we go to month 60. Okay, let's see if I can get the line tool to work. Okay, that, it's not a line, but okay, that's our first average rate of change. Our second one is from 19 through 69. So here's 19. And this looks like 69 right there, so I'm going to go. Okay, S drawing a freehand. I can't get my line tool to work, or can I? Let's see if I can do that one more time. Okay, one more time. The line tool is just not working. Oh boy, this is bothering me. Let me fix this. How do I get it to work? Oh, there we go. Line tool. I apologize for the delay there. Okay, so 19 through 69, right there. But I want to be green, go green, so we can color code. Okay, <laughs> this should do it, I can do this. Okay, boom. You can see the average rate of change looks a little bit steeper there, and that's what we found. And then you go from 36 through 72. So we used red for that. So 36, that's about here. And 72, about there. Right, it's not our last data point. And you can see it's a little bit steeper. I'm going to do a better job there. So you can see the steepness is increasing as we go. This red line's a little bit steeper than the other two. And then finally, um, we finished off with s month 60 through 70 th 73, the last data point we have. And you can see that that line is clearly steeper than the others. 
So this line is the steepest, which corresponds to the greatest average rate of change. And that brings us to choice four. All right, I hope that helped.